A lot of people have said that given the numbers that we are seeing presently as far as uh, new COVID cases are concerned, the, the falling rate of deaths in this country, we are clearly out of the second wave and that it's all over, it's getting better, on lockdown has started. Well, unfortunately, the truth is that while these numbers may be great right now, there is a very real fear that India is headed to a third COVID wave. This isn't some sort of effort by us to exaggerate a scenario, but these are experts and many have said that it is almost inevitable. Why? because the rate of vaccination is nowhere close to where it needs to be. So we actually sat down and, uh, and tried to project onwards uh, what the situation is in various states, which states are more vulnerable, which states are better off. We looked at the number of people who have actually uh, been vaccinated in, in these states presently, uh, and then trying to, uh, to, in other words, the rate of vaccination for two doses, and then project uh, you know, beyond and to the month of December. Why December? simply because it is in the month of December that the government has said that all adults should be uh, vaccinated in this country. Let's bring up the first uh, graphic that we have. So this one actually identifies hotspots uh, in, in all parts of the country. Can we have that up full screen? Let's have that up uh, full screen. Uh, all right. So essentially, the severity depends on the vaccination radius. This is much more clear. Now, this says slow vaccination rate. What does that mean? It means that if we continue to vaccinate people at the present rate of vaccination, then there will be hotspots in 99% of our, of our country in a third wave of COVID, which affects 1.39 billion people. Look at all the, those states. Those are many of the largest states in the country, and they're all marked red because they're all going to have hotspots. What we are vaccinating now is nowhere close to where we need to be. But what if we do step up the rate of vaccination? Now, if we do step up the rate of vaccination to 6 million a day, then you're going to end up seeing a, a differential situation where from 1.39 billion people being badly affected, potentially, it's down to 750 million. Now, in this, there's green, there is yellow or, or amber and red. 17% uh, of India, based on their rate of vaccination thus far, would be okay. The number of infections would be considerably lower. But then 54% of India, just look at the bottom right-hand side of your screen, in that graphic would be badly impacted. In these states, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Kerala, Bengal, Bihar, UP, and Telangana would be very, very badly affected still. So no good because these are very large states. But if we did actually go to 9 million uh, vaccines a day, uh, the number of people uh, impacted 400 million, right? So look at the, the, the number of um, green states. So much larger, 31% of India relatively sta uh, safe. Uh, the number of those states badly affected right there in the bottom of your screen at about 21%, 35, 36% odd percent of India in that yellow. So it, it's a bit convoluted in terms of all the, the, the names of states over there. But the bottom line is this. Look at the extreme left. As many as 1.39 billion people could be impacted with a slow rate of present vaccination. That goes down to 750 million people who could be impacted. It goes down further uh, to 400 million people. Um, and, and the number of hotspots comes down dramatically. So that's what we want, um, to step up vaccination. Even with 9 million a day, as you can see, a large part of our country still very, very vulnerable. Well, joining us now, Dr. Fahim Yunus. Uh, we're also joined by Dr. Mohammad Rafiq, Dr. Shurunjit Chatterjee, and uh, Dr. Lee Mang Yan also with us. Uh, Dr. Yunus, is a um, third wave inevitable in India? Uh, <laughs> I think that's a tough question. The way I look at it is unless 40, 50, 60 percent, a large number of population is not vaccinated, any country will be vulnerable to more waves. Dr. Mohammed Rafiq, what's the magic number we are looking for? Because, you know, Dr. Uh, Fauci in the U.S. said, you need to be vaccinated, you need to have vaccinated 80% of your target group, then there'd be some sort of a herd immunity. Uh, lots of people have had COVID and therefore you'd be safe. But that's a yeah. huge number. That's a huge number. Now, short of that, what is the minimum percent in India that we need to sort out right to say that we can yeah. get rid of our masks in this country at least in some places yeah yeah actually uh, going to the india situation i think uh, if we can try to vaccinate at least um, 
60 to 70 percent uh, because herd immunity starts coming in at some after vaccination by around 60 to 70 percent of the population gets vaccinated. Actually, in the UAE, uh, in that way, we are uh, uh, feel that it's much better because the vaccination rates have been pretty good. And the target vaccination which they're planning to achieve is about 100 percent by the end of this year. Uh, and at this rate of about 135 doses for 100 people, I think pretty much we are doing strong in this. Uh, but if you ask me about herd immunity, I think uh, about 60 to 70 percent in India should at least uh, uh, give a very uh, comfortable feeling. Dr. Yunus, is that the big fear that, um, you know, that there's going to be a, a variable situation in India, places like Delhi, a few other states which are more conscientious in the process of vaccination, right, or Mumbai, a big city, people would be better off there, whereas other parts, states where it's for it's not people are not vaccinating in the rate that they need to you, Uttar Pradesh, for example, huge state, huge population, we'd be in deep trouble. That is correct. I think viruses risk is asymmetric and vaccines benefit is also asymmetric. So the good thing here is you have to look at it a little bit more nuanced which means there is no magic number at 70%, which means at 69% we are vulnerable, and at 71% we are made of titanium. It doesn't work that right. way. In US currently, our country is at 52% vaccination. And I used to see about 75 patients with COVID in our hospital every day, my group. That's how many patients we had in our hospital every day. Today, we have one COVID patient in our hospital. Wow. And he, that person also not vaccinated. We are at 50% in the country. So I think I want to make sure we understand that with every person who gets vaccinated, you're getting closer and closer to that number. Another factor to consider, once you're at, let's say, 30%, another 10, 20, 30% of India is probably already recovered from COVID. Yeah. And will be as susceptible. So the situation is not as gloomy. I think you got to stay at that 7 to 10 million vaccinations a day. That is the main focus. If you can stay on it, uh, you'll get there. Yeah. Um, Dr. Lee Mang Yan, um, in a country like India where we have this huge population burden and not enough vaccines presently, and even if we get enough vaccines, just administering them, it's so difficult, right? In a situation like this, is a single dose vaccine, whether it's an injection or hopefully a, a nasal vaccine, uh, very much a solution. It helps in every respect. You need only one dose. It's, administration is faster. And, you know, it seems, is, is that the way forward for countries like India? Uh, hi, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so first, I want to stress that uh, I'm the biologist working on vaccine development for five years in the WHO reference lab. I have my vaccine patent on pending. So I want to tell people is from the beginning, I tell people don't expect a very safe and efficient vaccine in the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, I understand people's eager and their need to vaccine. If not, they have the panic. And in short term, the vaccine, if it's kind of from the good company, it can help people. Mm -hmm. But the thing is first, this, uh, this virus always circulating around populations, especially like in the uh, country like India, you have such large population. So the mutant will go faster. Yes. And also this kind of vaccine, because lack of the experiment data and lack of the safety proof from the human trial, there are a lot of potential risk. And the most important thing is, I think everyone should realize this is not the nature of green virus. It is uh, virus after a lot of gain of function modification from the China military. So if you use your experience based on the nature of occurring virus like the seasonal influenza and tell people to use the vaccine and even enhance the vaccine and again boost the aid, then you cannot overcome this virus. Well, that, that, that's this, interesting. Uh, uh, Dr. Li Mangyan, are, are you suggesting, and I just want to get this right, that, that you don't be you believe that this came out of a lab um, that there wasn't a, a transmission, you know, between species, uh, and, and therefore it's not natural. This is not natural. Is that what you're suggesting? That is not only my belief. That is already been proved, and all the people uh, insist on nature occurring. Uh, 
until now you say either they know they are wrong or they cannot prove anything and so have uh, although they still stay with China government try to tell people that's from nature and that's how this virus is dangerous to people because from the beginning China designed this virus to make it look like from nature okay. and then when doctors they use the nature virus experience to cope, uh, to deal with that this virus is not efficient and I want to stress that we do have drugs in China Military, um, uh, military scientists apply pattern for hydroxychloroquine to use the, for new purpose as anti-COVID back to last February. So many drugs we can use. We should develop the drugs protocol to trial uh, to treat people, especially early treatment. Okay. Vaccine can be a helpful thing, but not all. Okay, that's really important points over there and fascinating. Dr. Chatterjee, last question to you. If you can wrap this up for us. Um, are we going to face a third wave in India? And what is your personal opinion on children being more vulnerable? I know the government has said that that may not necessarily be the case. What is your view on this? See, I'm very afraid the way things are being opened up. I think the opening up should be really gradual. We have really suffered a very bad second wave recently. We see the markets today. You see our hospital today. It is all crowded from day two itself. If we don't, if the citizens of this country don't take care of this, we are again going to be in trouble. And third wave is really imminent then, and we have, then we'll be in deep trouble. Obviously, we should start preparing the, how to face the third wave if it comes through. And we have to be, the government as well as the citizens of this country have to be really careful that we don't go through again the same sort of events that we faced during the second wave. Now, as far as children, the thing goes, as far as history goes, in a pandemic situation, what happens is in the first wave, mostly the elderly people are affected. The second wave, the younger people are affected. The third wave, it is quite a few times children who get affected. But it is not necessarily true that it will follow the same pattern, but there is always a risk that the children might get affected more during the third wave. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all very much uh, for joining us. I think Dr. Chatterjee's message that we just have to tighten up and sharpen up, be smart about protecting ourselves. Otherwise, let's face it, we're in deep trouble in India. Uh, that's a message we will keep repeating. I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us.